Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to my channel. In this episode, I'm going to show you guys a first look on Darktable 3.2.1. It has just been released like three hours ago. I'm very excited about it. It, it looks absolutely amazing. So without further ado, let's go. And here we have the light table menu and the first thing that I want to show you guys is how smooth everything is when using this slider in the culling mode. And now when I move over my mouse on the images you don't see anything but you can change that by clicking on the star symbol and then you have the option to change the overlays while culling. So let's say I'm going for permanent overlays, let me click that and there you see we have a permanent overlay on the culling images and we can change that as well to permanent extended overlays so now you see that it has the file type as well uh, the title of the file and then the settings used to shoot this image and if we go to the dark room you can see that we don't have any overlays over here right now and we can change that again by clicking on that star and let's say we're going for overlays on mouse hover and now you see that it starts to appear so now we see that the stars and we get a little pop-up but you see the stars down below another great thing that has changed is the way how the color picker looks so if I go to the color zones and if we hit control and click the color picker you now see these points and you can just change the size of the area uh, rather than having to do everything new again so let me click out of that if you hit the right mouse button the entire image will be selected by default so that's another great change that has been happening. So we've got the light table in the culling. We can change the settings, the thumbnails overlay, and we've got the culling overlays. So permanent overlay, there you go. I think I like this one the most, the extended permanent, extended overlays one. So let's go back to the dark room. And we've also got a new histogram added, which is the RGB parade. So let me show you guys how they look. So here we have the histogram, we can switch to the RGB parade and this is the RGB parade and another great thing about this is that you can adjust the height of this by hitting control and then scrolling your mouse wheel button. And fortunately you can drag this out a little bit and now let me make it a little bit better. And why is this a good thing? Let me explain to you. If for whatever reason you want to nail the perfect white balance and you can't really do it by using any tools in the image, what you can do is you need to make sure that the red, greens and the blues are at the same height. And when they are at the same height, that means you've got the perfect white balance. So I'm very happy with this. This will help you edit your photos even if you're colorblind. So that's a great addition to Darktable 3.2.1. Another thing they have done in Darktable with the coding is that they use a new downsampling preference. It has been introduced for a faster response in Darktable. So the preview is either computed at full resolution, which is the original default value, or half a third or a quarter of the original size. So that allows for better performance, but can slightly hinder the precision of the guided filter masking. And please keep in mind, this is being applied to everything so it touches all areas of dark table so masks guided filter liquefy control scrub and rotate lens correction etc so please keep that in mind so now when editing a photo you have three options three possible workflows in dark table so the previous version only had a preference to choose whether to auto apply the base curve module or not and a lot of people didn't like that so what they did right now is they made three options the first one is the display revert that will use the base curve module on default then we've got the scene revert that uses the filmic and the exposure modules and then we've got none and that doesn't use the base curve or the filmic module and filmic rgb has been upgraded and let me change to a raw file to show you guys how that looks so here we have a rather flat image uh, i've just added the basic adjustments to this image some lens correction and tone equalizer so now let's activate the filmic rgb and the filmic rgb is updated to version 4 uh, that means that it has a new color science with integrated highlight recovery which is great for the highlight areas over here and on the boat you can change the values around if you 
want to play around with them or if you don't like how it looks or how the outcome is I think this looks pretty fine I don't really use the filmic RGB so in my edits I'm going to switch off the base curve and not use the filmic RGB so I can start from scratch so one of the things that falls underneath the new features and changes is that it added support for curved gradients and that can be helpful when putting a gradient mask on an image with the horizon line that is curved due to the lens distortion uh, it can be for artistic goals as well let me show you guys how this image looks without the lens distortion activated so here it is i might just uh, make a duplicate real quick so i can just go beneath that Obviously this image looks horrible, but let me show you guys how that looks. So I'm going to use the exposure module. I'm going to activate that. I want to use a mask and I'm going to use a gradient mask. And now let's see if we can curve it. And you can curve it by putting your mouse on it and then scrolling it towards you or away from you. And that way you can curve the gradient mask, which is a very, very nice feature to have. So I'm very thrilled with that. It's artistic and it'll definitely add to some images that you might edit. So let's go back to this image and let me show you guys the retouch module because they've changed that as well. I'm going to activate that one and it's got a new keyboard shortcut, which is show or hide shapes, uh, which you can map to a key to quickly show or hide shapes. So here we have a shape that I've added. Let's go to the preference menu. And now we can go to shortcuts and let's just find it. So let's search for it, retouch, search. And now you see that you've got a show or hide shapes. If I double click that and I'm going to use the Y, I've now mapped it to the key Y. So if I close this one down, if I hit Y, the shape is now gone. And if I hit Y again, the shape comes forward. And that's how you can map a key to a shortcut. So that can come in handy to speed up your workflow. And for the spot removal tool, so let me just undo that, go back to this one. So let's go to the spot removal tool. Uh, let's activate it. So let's just hit control and click the ellipse. I'm going to click it, hold it, drag it down a little bit, and I'm going to do it again over here. So now you see that I've added in two spots. And if I want to show the shapes, I have to go to the preference menu. I'm going to shortcuts, I'm going to fill in spot removal, hit search so I don't have to find it manually. I'm going to hit show or hide shapes, double click it, I'm going to hit Y again. And I'm just going to go back to the module and now hit Y so I see the shapes. I can change the donor area around that will change how the shape will be affected. And I can hit the Y again and now the shapes are gone. And by default, the standard colors of the overlays or of the shapes is gray, but you can change it by clicking this symbol and then change the overlay color to red or to green or to yellow, which comes in handy in an image where it is, let's say a lot of gray and you can't really tell where the edges are. You can do it as well by hitting control and then hitting the zero on your numpad and that will cycle through the colors as well. But that isn't working for me, so I'm not quite sure if that's a bug or not. So if you think this is a bug, let me know in the comment section down below and we might be able to address it on GitHub. So another thing they have changed is the crop and rotate module. So let's go back to the crop and rotate. Let's activate it. And I don't want a spot removal to be activated. There you go. Let's activate the crop and rotate module. Yellow, it's still set on yellow, but all right. So I'm just going to decrease its size so I can work around a little bit. So now I can move this freely around, but if I hit shift and then move it around, I can only move it up and down. And if I hit control and try to move it around, I can only move it from the left to the right. So horizontally. So once again, hitting shift, it means that I can only address this or change this vertically. And if I hit control, I can only change this horizontally. And it also allows you to format ratios to be entered as a float number. So the next thing I want to show you guys is let me deactivate that one. Let's go back, compress history stack. I'm gonna close that one down. So let's take a snapshot and let's click the original one and the snapshot. And now you see that we've got a flag over here and that will show you where the line is for you to drag it around to see a before and an after. So that way you have a clear view 
on where the edge is. Now, if for whatever reason, let me deactivate this. We want to add a vignette to this image. You can now change the fall off strength to 200% to have a better control. So we can change the scale. So this is very minimal. This is very extreme. It doesn't even cover the image, but you see that you can change this quite a bit to either strengthen the vignetting or to just mask it out or feather it out. Now let's go to the white balance module. I'm going to show you guys how you can find it as well by going to more modules and then find it in the list down below. So we need the W of the white balance. So one of the things you can change right now is you can add a user defined mode in the white balance module to keep the last modification of that module. So you can change it by moving the tint around or you can change the temperature around to warm it up or to cool it down. And it is then possible to go back to the last modified setting after selecting another mode. So let's say the spot, for example. So these are the values. I'm just going to make something extreme. I'm going to the spot and I'm just going to hit this. And I'm like, nah, I don't really like that. Maybe the clouds, that looks pretty cool. But let's go back to the user modified one. And then these values are still saved. So they don't reset by default. So when we're in the map menu, which you can go to by clicking this symbol right here and then select map, let's say we want to select these photos down below and I want to place all of them in the map. So I'm hitting control while I'm selecting all of them. I can just drag and drop them on the map. And now you see that I can just select these images and move them around. So I've got six images over here and I've got six images over here. So that allowed me to place all six of them at the same spot. And now I've just switched them around. Obviously this wasn't taken in Russia. These photos were taken in Norway, but Hey, it's the thought that counts. So let's move on to the next change. Another thing you can change is the tooltips. You can put them on or you can switch them off by hitting shift T. So if they are on, and you hover over a symbol, it will show you what it is. So multiple instances, actions, middle click creates new instance. But if I hit shift T again, and I'm going to switch them off, you will see that the dialog box doesn't show up. So if you know what you're doing, you can switch it off. And if you don't know what you're doing or you're new to Darktable, you can switch it on and it'll help you along the way while you're editing your images. They also added a uh, confirmation when deleting or updating presets. You can apply presets that you've created. You can go to the light table and then you can go to styles. If I click backyard and I click remove, it will show me a dialog box asking me if I really want to move one style. I'm just going to click that away, but that's another thing they implemented that as a extra confirmation to make sure you don't just delete or update something you don't want to. And if you apply a style to the image, it can now be overwritten. So if you already had one, the new one can overwrite it. And that makes the style module more consistent with the copy paste of history. They also added some keyboard shortcuts, some extras like to toggle the last snapshot on or off. And as shown before, you can find them in the shortcuts menu. And they changed, they made a big overhaul in the dark table preference menu as well. Before we had tabs on top of this, which you had to go through. So the general import light table, etc. And now they just put them on the side, kind of like GIMP. And you can just go through them, see what everything is about, and then change the values accordingly if you desire to do so. And for the tethering menu, which won't work because I don't have a camera connected to my computer right now, you can now add more than 500 images, which you need for time lapse. So that's amazing that they did that as well. You can just hook it up to your laptop, have it take shots, and you can see if everything looks good, and then, you know, work on the images and export them and import them in your video program as a video and stuff like that. So that's amazing as well for people that are into that stuff. And that's it. I hope you guys like it. There are way more changes and I'm going to make sure that I put a link to the GitHub release in the description down below so you can get the newest and the latest version of Darktable 3.2.1 and you can read all about the changes that have been done. 
The changes I've addressed are, in my opinion, the most biggest changes that you can actually see. They did a lot of rework in the background, uh, changes in the code and stuff like that to give us all a smoother experience. If you've got any questions about Darktable 3.2.1, let me know in the comment section down below. And if you want to see more of me, click that playlist over there. And if you haven't subscribed already, there's a button for that over there as well. And for this week, there's only one more thing left for me to say, which is make love to the like button. And until next time. Do it.